Okay, welcome back to VMworld 2013. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. And this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. My voice is getting hoarse. This is our fourth <laughs> day of live coverage. My eyes are bleeding, the party last night. And my co-host is Jeff Frick for this segment. And our first guest on day four, kind of wrapping up, everything's winding down, is Vanessa Alvarez, who's a longtime Clouderati, you know, on Twitter early on as an analyst, uh, now head of marketing for Scale Computing. Vanessa, welcome back to theCUBE, your CUBE alumni. Thank you. Um, so what do you think? Well, yeah, the last day of the show, what's just your take? It's, you need the analysis. You know, I think for 10 years for VMware, it's been quite interesting. They obviously pioneered uh, virtualization, uh, and it's interesting to see them now shift from doing just server virtualization to bringing in both networking, right, what we saw with NSX, and storage, which we saw with vSAN. Uh, I think that today, it's really about how do you bring those three pieces together, right? I've always been a fan of converged infrastructure, Obviously, scale computing today is hyperconvergence, and uh, and we have a converged infrastructure of server storage and virtualization. So I think you know the fact that VMware is finally bringing those pieces together is just testament to the fact that converged infrastructure really is the future of IT. And kind of going back a little bit to what you were talking about earlier in terms of user experience, today IT has to be simplified. Right? Nobody wants to deal with managing separate servers, separate networking, separate storage. IT wants simplified infrastructure so that they can deliver a better user experience to their end constituents. And I think that's really the core of bringing these three components together. We were talking about virtualization on the intro segment um, as a disruptive enabler, and you've seen this evolve from you know, downloads from software to a full-blown you know, company tracking to be you know, billions and billions of dollars in revenue. Um, what is What's your view on virtualization on, and, and its acceptance and its, its positioning as it's evolving? Virtualization today is mainstream, right? I mean, we see it in the market. Companies have gone through the whole phase of server consolidation. And, and I think it's a given that you know, the benefits of virtualization are real today. Right? I think what we're starting to see really is that shift, and, and we see it in our, in our customer base as well at scale computing, that People want to go beyond server consolidation today, right? They want to be able to really leverage uh, virtualization to achieve a higher level of management and orchestration within their environments. And that's really where you start to see private cloud coming into, uh, into its, you know, its own and really starting to see the fact that companies have to start to build out their private clouds in order to be able to fully achieve the benefits of virtualization and, and the efficiencies, right? So. So Vanessa, we, we often love sports analogies here on the Cube, uh, right? And, and uh, boys club. we talk about yeah, where you know where are we in the game? So on a base, you know, we're at AT and T Park, a lot of yeah. events, nine innings in a in a game. So you've got a real great perspective because you come from the analyst side. So you've right. covered a lot of stuff, you've seen a lot of change. Where are we? Where are we in the game? Are we at the early days? Are we at the late days? And and that begs the question: How do you define? You know, how do we move down the game? What what are the things that we're kind of crossing as we go inning by inning? So I think the first step was really virtualization, right? Server consolidation. And, and companies took a while for that to happen, right? I mean, how long have we been doing, how long have we been virtualizing environments now for? Too long in my opinion, but, uh, but the reality is that it's happening and right. that's great. And so I think in order to start to move sort of the next inning, uh, it's, it's really key to start to bring together the network and the storage components. Obviously, scale computing, that's you know, what we do. We're an integrated architecture. We've seen VMware do the same thing, right? Starting to bring NSX, starting to bring vSAN together, and really bring, tie together those three pieces with intelligence, right? Software intelligence. And that's the next step, right? Bringing those three pieces together, make sure that they're you know, interconnected and, and, and really efficiently being utilized within the environment. And then the next level and the next inning, and I think it's you know, still an open field in terms of who makes it, is really bringing in the application, the end user experience, and, and tying that all together, right? 
Vanessa, one of the things we talked about just in the intro and, and throughout the day when, we, when Pat was on here, we kind of had to needle Pat a little bit, but Mark Andreessen and Pat talked about the future of IT on a big panel with uh, um, you know, uh, luminaries from the tech industry um, like Pat, and, and there's a philosophy difference. People think that you know, the world's going to be different. And, and so that being said, there's different debates, but I want to talk about hyperscale. because one of the things that everyone talks to this year, whether it's EMC world, is you could be the next Facebook. You could be, especially DevOps, right? So, <laughs> so what's happening is applications are now at the center of the innovation conversation because they're driving infrastructure change. You know, our history and you know, for our generation, it wasn't like that. The infrastructure did their stuff and enabled it. Mm -hmm. And then you dealt with what you were, your cards you were dealt on the table with infrastructure. Now it's completely the other way around. And they use Facebook as an example. And they say that's hyperscale. So hyperscale is a, a use case that a handful of companies are playing and obviously mm -hmm. building their own Google, Facebook. But net, not all IT's like that, so there's a huge mid-range market opportunity for enterprise hyperscale. What's your take on that? Because you guys in scale, obviously scale computing, yeah. you're in that market and you're, you're swimming around with the other fish there. Um, how big is the pond? Is it an opportunity? Fusion's trying to go there as well. Um, mm -hmm. Is it available? I mean, how gettable is it? Is it, is it, is it adopting? Is it, is it in, 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 in market right now? Absolutely, so hyperconvergence, hyperscale, all these trends are really driving the market to a different level, right? So when you think about what Facebook's open compute project has done, right? Our friends at Netflix open sourcing all their tools and, and really showing the industry that this can be done, that you can uh, scale your infrastructure environment far beyond what we ever thought we could possibly do. It's just, and it's just a testament as to where the infrastructure is going today. Um, we leverage x86 you know, servers and wrap our software intelligence around it, so our ICOS patented technology, to really deliver the efficiencies of x86 servers, right? Yeah. White uh, commodity hardware at the end of the day. And we're able to deliver the same performance, same scalability, same efficiencies as our friends at you know, Amazon and Netflix and so on and so forth. You know, when I think about Facebook, and, and I know this has been sort of the controversy around you know, how Facebook does it versus how enterprises do it, certainly different workloads, different kinds of performance requirements, so on and so forth, as opposed to just uploading pictures on Facebook. Yeah. Right? I mean, <laughs> one of the funniest comments we had on theCUBE was, Amazon's trying to be like the enterprise, and the enterprise is trying to be like Amazon. How does that balance itself? <laughs> it's, like, right, well, gonna, it's a collision. You know? Well, it's interesting that you say that because I actually see Amazon going to being like maybe the next IBM or something along those lines, yeah. right? In terms of have, building out the enterprise business. But the reality is that company, you know, obviously scale computing. We leverage the same concepts that Netflix and Amazon do. do and deliver that in a tailored manner to you know the mid-market enterprise. Give an example of a, of, a, of a customer, or you don't have to name names, if you can yeah. name names, it'd be yeah. great, but how they're using it. So today, it's all about simplified infrastructure, right? Be a highly automated solution uh, that you just really rack it, stack it, and power it, right? And it, it runs itself, it runs its applications. Our customers today don't want to invest in managing infrastructure, right? They, they probably have you know, a, f a handful of IT guys. They don't want to invest anymore. You know, obviously, the business wants to invest in growth, not in managing infrastructure. Well, the, what we deliver is really simplified IT. right? Simple, available, scalable. You don't have to manage a separate server. You don't have to manage a separate SAN. You know, it's, everything is integrated into one single platform. Yeah, another good quote we had from a customer that was on, um, we asked, hey, what, what, what does cloud style mean to you? And there was a quote, a tweet, I forget the guy's name, I, I tweeted earlier. He says, you know, cloud style, it's like, a, it's like a form of doing business, a mindset, you know, cloud style or DevOps mm -hmm. style, but yeah. cloud style. I go, what does uh, cloud, cloud style mean to you? Doing it cloud style, you know, yeah. in the enterprise. And, and he goes, horizontally scaling at will. Well, I'm like, <laughs> that was money. I mean, but that's yeah. what they want, right? That is they, what want they want horizontal scalability, yeah. and that really was Amazon is what brought to the table that mindset exactly. that I don't have to go, you know, just scale up. I can go scale out and go horizontal at will. Exactly, and you don't have to pay up front, right? You don't have to over provision. You don't have to, you know, buy another system in order to be able to just add, you know, a little bit of capacity. With our architecture, you can actually just buy single nodes as you grow. 
right? So you don't need to make the necessary upfront CapEx investment. And then not only expand, but then turn it off when you don't need it anymore, right? For all these kind of one-time projects or exactly. events, whatever. Yeah. I, I just feel like we need to get Gordon Moore on here, because we just keep talking about <laughs> X86 and the inevitable <laughs> march of Moore's law, so we're going to have to work on, on getting Gordon on the queue. But yeah. what I'm curious about, Vanessa, again, leveraging your, you know, you've been looking at this space a long time. You've got a great perspective. Yeah. VMworld, uh, not, not to say three years from now, no. not, not one or two. What are we going to be talking about? Conversions, right, hyper-conversions, really that integrated nature of infrastructure. Today, you cannot look at silos anymore, right? You cannot look just at servers or networking or storage. I think we're going to start to see not individual vendors, right, but vendors really starting to come together and build that integrated architecture, right? Whether they do it, however they do it, it remains to be seen. Obviously, we're doing it already, but uh, you know, it, it's, it's inevitable that we have to move towards that, that route, right? Because at the end of the day, you want to look at infrastructure. You want to look at how you deliver your applications, not necessarily how you, know, you virtualize your server, how you virtualize your network, or how you virtualize storage. And, and ultimately, I think you know, the partner ecosystem Definitely changes, right? I think you know VMware has has broadened out its ecosystem. Certain moves that they've made, you know, probably don't necessarily fit with that ecosystem model anymore. I mm -hmm. think that changes a little bit. Uh, but that being said, there's so so much innovation in, in technology today that, you know, what happens today, what happens in two years. It's going to be even I, more exciting, right? I just realized I tweeted wrong. Thanks to Robert Novak for pointing out that I, when I tweeted Vanessa Alvarez one, I missed the letter, and he's like, just, I love the internet. <laughs> it's open, it's open just, journalism. It's just, it's just, it's, you know what, it's all the spell checkers are out there, all the, all the fact checkers, it's crowdsourcing. Thank you, Robert Novak, appreciate it. You know, the hyperscale thing's a big deal. Let's, go, yeah. let's talk about yeah. that for a second, because I, the Wall Street Journal just posted an article this morning about the server share. IDC put out some yeah. numbers, and it's all gloom and doom. Um, but I want folks to go to wikibon.org and search for hyperscale. David yeah. Floyer has some of the best research out there on hyperscale. We've been following IO-centric infrastructure, Fusion IO since it's been a private company, mm -hmm. and that whole flash market. So we, we, have our, we have our hand right in there. So go to, go to we want for data. Yeah. But the Wall Street Journal points out, HP's earnings are down, they talk about their, their shipments, and then market share numbers came up, Dell's up, Cisco's up a bit. I mean, well, Cisco's up from a smaller <laughs> base, so the, you mm -hmm. know, the numbers mean anything to me. But, but Peter Levine yesterday at Andreessen Horowitz, uh, he was at one of the early employees at Veritas, yeah. sold ZenSource to Citrix, right. uh, he's a player, he has a good vision, and he said, quote, there could be thousands of servers in a building, because I asked him the question, software-defined data center is great, software-defined is software, yeah. but the data center still is a physical asset, right, so, what is that going to look like in the future? And he said, a building could have thousands and thousands of servers. Yeah. That's, a, that's a challenge. I mean, it could be a sensor, you know, how you yeah, find Yeah, he actually said, the building becomes the server. I got the, the quote that we The building becomes the server. So to me, it's like, okay, data center's optimized, yeah. but then everything else turns into an addressable device, internet of things, obviously, is what we talk about, industrial internet, things like that. So that brings up, back to our horizontally scalable question. Yeah. That's not a unique Facebook problem. Right. That's everyone's problem. Right. So, so take us through the mindset of the current IT guys that are challenged with this, because again, They've been past decade, consolidate, consolidate, right. now do something different and grow. I mean, how do you guys <laughs> talk to those customers? Are they ready for your box? Is it plug and play? Talk about the mindset of that IT guy. Absolutely, and you know, I think when you take a look at some businesses today, the building data centers is what they're going to do, right? Some companies, just because for regulatory and compliance reasons or for whatever it may be, you know, EMEA has you know, certain challenges where they have to keep their data you know, within country. So I think there's certainly going to be certain niches where we see that you know, data centers are going to still exist uh, and they're going to have to have you know, these thousands of servers. But the reality is that from our customer perspective, they want to be able to eliminate a lot of that footprint. And the integrated architecture approach is really what it does, right? And it eliminates the footprint, it integrates everything into a single platform. They don't need to have you know, five people managing this infrastructure environment. And they can continue to run their applications, highly available, you know, always running. We deliver the SLAs, obviously. Um, but that, you know, that being said, there's certainly customers who are 
um, trying to figure out how they get to this sort of hyperscale uh, concept, right? They see Facebook, they see Amazon. They want Facebook. I mean, there's they some envy there. There's yes. some IT envy because they, you know not everyone can do their own. Right. And even in the DevOps space, we were talking earlier in this week, and we've been all, we love DevOps, but yeah. you know, an IT guy. I've been running storage. I've been for, for years, EMC storage, all this stuff. I'm like yeah. DevOps. Is there a book? Do I read? I mean, I'm not a DevOps guy. <laughs> right. So it's like they want DevOps. But it's like, how do I study up on DevOps when it's like? It's really hard to do. It is. I mean, being a DevOps guy in the modern era, the early pioneers, yeah. they were eating glass, you know? You know, spitting out nails. I mean, it's <laughs> like hard stuff. You're right, and I think it's still a big shift from an organizational perspective, right? DevOps is an organizational movement much more so than the actual technology. I think the technology is there already. Yeah. You know, the IT people just aren't there, aren't quite there yet, and so th that certainly has a long way to go. But infrastructure like ours, you know, integrated architectures really simplify the technology part, right? We deliver that same concept you know, of like the Facebooks of the world and and simplify that for our customers, and that's what they want, yeah. right? They want to be able to scale like Facebook or Amazon, right? They want to be able to to have you know that cost efficiency that they do in their own environment, right? And yeah. so we can deliver that today. You, you know, what's funny about the cube is we get a lot of text messages, and people do respond on, on, on to yeah. our Twitter handle, yeah. but I get mostly text messages and direct messages. I don't know if people don't want to ask it, but they had a lot of response to your boys' club comment earlier <laughs> on the cube, saying, you know, I'm boys sorry. Club. No, but I want to talk about that, this is important. First of all, the Cube is, yeah. we don't discriminate against anything, anyone who has signal from the noise. And we've had Kim Stevenson on. We love anyone who's a tech athlete and you're a tech athlete. So, you know, the Cube, track record speak for itself, the videotapes on YouTube, go look at it. But, <laughs> but uh, the women in tech question is good yes. because there are more women in tech than people think about, in my opinion. My observation is a lot more women in tech, so certainly the new, new generation, you're seeing huge numbers of people because tech now is broader. It's not just the boys club anymore. Yeah, yeah at, at the top, anyone, you know, over 40, maybe that's generation has had less women, but there are a lot of women. What's your take on the women in tech conversation? Um, is it overblown, is it legit? What's your take on that? You know, I think that there's a number of very successful women in tech, right, today. Uh, I know you've had a, a number of them on theCUBE, yeah. right, Padma, Sony, uh, and, and thank you for having me as well, and, and a number of other women. And, and certainly, we're starting to see them come out of the woodworks and, and really start to identify um, the successes that they've been doing in technology for a long time. Um, but, and I apologize for the boys club, it was no, the, no, the sports no, comment, no, right? No, no, well, um, no, of course, but, yeah, we're, yeah, we're but Kim the, Stevenson, by the way, is yeah. a huge college football fan. <laughs> <laughs> she always uh, texts me, you know, so we had Cynthia Stoddard on at AT&T Park, she's the CEO of NetApp. Yeah. Um, but I think it, we just need to really start to highlight, you know, a number of women who are out there already in the engineering field, right, in tech marketing, and, and, and really start to showcase what it is that they're doing, right? And I think that's really key. What, you know, I think today it's not really about saying I'm a woman and I'm in tech and I'm doing all these great things. It's a, just really about highlighting that person, right, and, and making sure that you know their successes are also being uh, showcased in, in the public and, and making sure that we realize that there is certainly a number of women out there today who yeah. are, are contributing to the industry. Yeah, I mean, Dave's got daughters, John's got daughters, I've yeah. got daughters, so you know, we're, we're big fans, and I think I think what people don't uh, always appreciate too are the number of types of, of yeah. professions and way that you can get involved in this industry. Right. It's not just being a coder, it's not just well, being everyone the guy has mobile that phone. Everyone has connected <laughs> devices now, so every, <laughs> everyone has phones and connected, yeah. so I think tech is exposed, and, and one of the interesting thing about big data, and we talked about this earlier on, on the first day, is that core IT has been a very specific function but the role of IT is expanding out into the business units and the business managers, and you're seeing big data and, and BI and data warehousing enabling new types of tech analysis. So you, there's, that's opening up IT, the concept of IT yeah. is touching everyone now. So you're seeing new roles emerging. So I think that's going to be a tsunami of opportunity. I agree, and I think, you know, obviously we start with the data science history. Right? If you ask someone, 10 years ago we were, that we were going to have data scientists, I don't think that we would have ever thought that, right? Um, DevOps, you know, DevOps engineers is something that I've seen as well emerging in the last few years. Didn't see that 10 years ago, right? And, and what is that? I think that's just 
a testament to the fact that IT skills are, are changing. They need to change, obviously. We see the convergence and hyperconvergence uh, architectures coming out and, and bringing together service storage and networking, for example, and also moving up stack, right? Whether, whether you're in IT or whether you're in the applications team, you have to have an understanding of both those areas, right? And so I think that that's really you know, a testament to the fact that IT skills are changing, and, and they have to. Right, IT is not going away. It's just evolving, mm -hmm. right? Today, mm -hmm. and it's evolving because technology is forcing it to evolve, and that's and that's really interesting for me. So, talk about what's going on at scale in your new role. I mean, you're now you know digging in to a company. You've been an analyst where you were seeing everything. Now you're kind of you're on a team. You got yeah. a jersey on. Scale computing. What's <laughs> happening with with uh, the company? And what are you working on? What are your projects? And okay. what are your, some of your customers doing? So. Earlier this month, we announced uh, a momentum around the company. We launched HC3, our, our virtualization platform, a year ago. Um, since then, 65% quarter over quarter new customer business growth. Right, certainly a testament to the integrated architecture approach, right, this hyper-convergence, it's starting to really resonate with customers. And for all intents and purposes, whether you want to call it a buzzword or not, the concept is real and our customers are loving it, right? Simplified IT, simple, available, scalable, that's what they're looking for in their infrastructure, right? And the demand's pretty high? Yeah, absolutely, 700 customers in a year. That's you know, certainly something that we, uh, we, we expected, but you know, when it comes down to it, it's been quite a year, and when you're in that year and you're in it, um, and I haven't been in it the whole year, <laughs> but, but the team has, and, and you know, I think they realize that Okay, this is you know this is definitely something that is needed in the market. There's certainly demand for it, you know. And we launched a couple of different configurations throughout the year to meet the demand of more performance and more scalability. Uh, we announced on Monday that in order to move our customers from server consolidation to private cloud and eventually to you know the vision of software-defined environments and software-defined data centers. We had to really take a step back and look at our storage architecture. Right? At the end of the day, storage is the foundation of right, IT, right. right? This so and it's the Somebody hardest part. Somewhere. Right, exactly. <laughs> Data's growing, right? And storage really needed to change, so we announced an object-based store, which is going to be integrated into our architecture, right, and be the foundation for the platform. Again, something that for our customers doesn't really matter we abstract all of that complexity for them and give them one single platform, right? But for us, it's really about being able to move our customers from A to Z, right? Whether you want to go from server consolidation to private cloud, or you're a little bit more advanced in moving from private cloud to now, you know, uh, uh, trying to realize a software-defined environment. And at the end of the day, customers are already kind of in a software-defined environment, right? I mean, they already play with software and server consolidation, right? Private cloud is all software, right? At mm -hmm. the end of the day, we're software we, with commodity hardware, right? So they already understand the concepts. It's just about being able to give them the full, the full vision. Right, give right? us the facts on some of the, the factoids of the company, funding, employees and uh, revenue. Revenue undisclosed, <laughs> so we'll get that out of the way. Um, but about 75 employees, uh, funding was about 40 million, uh, benchmark capital, scale ventures, yeah. and Bill Gurley is uh, a good friend of the company. He's and a good a, investor, he's yes. aggressive. Benchmark's yeah. aggressive, they do some great investments. They're totally kicking, kicking butt right now. Uh, absolutely, and, you know, and I think they have uh, the same vision that we do, right? And it's about simplified IT. Simplified infrastructure, hyper-convergence, delivering the same, the similar concepts of Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, in a tailored manner to, to businesses, right? So you can bring that hyperscale mindset in a box for customers, that's basically yes, what you have. Yes, absolutely. And wrapped with software intelligence, right? And our software is really our IP today, right? That's really what gives our customers uh, the benefits and, and uh, efficiencies of hyperscale and hyperconvergence. I just got a note from Stu Miniman that uh, the Wikibon link is wikibon.org slash SLI for the hyperscale data. If you're interested, go to that report. <laughs> uh, a lot of great research. Thanks, Stu, for that. Uh, wikibon.org slash SLI, which stands for Software-Led Infrastructure because 
It's certainly <laughs> not defined, it's being defined by, mm. by the players. And we talked to Martin Casada at, uh, at the VMware, you know, the founder of right. Sierra, you know, software network virtualization, really amazing. This is happening, convergence is happening, but not the way it was defined five years ago. Exactly. It's now. You know, I, I often hear comparisons, oh, this was done 20 years ago, right? So what's changed? <laughs> yeah, flash, virtualization, exactly. you know, cloud, you know, like you DevOps. Were, like you were saying earlier, you know, startups today move fast, right? Before, yeah. when, when you least expect it, we're going to be able to maybe have that, you know. Rick Jackson's now at Rackspace, and this is completely yeah. other side of the coin for him. It's a service provider, they're doing cloud, they're in, he goes, John, it's, it's like a, a hectic pace. They're shipping code every day. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of software, right? <laughs> Vanessa House, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Always a, always a great interview. A CUBE alumni, now head of marketing at um, Scale Computing. Um, again, Facebook in a box, Netflix in a box. This is the kind of convergent Data center in a box. Data center in a box. And a woman tech it. athlete, which we like. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. For coming you. On. Okay, we'll be right Still back. Get you a jersey Day somewhere. four <laughs> of our live extended coverage. This is a special extended day coverage of theCUBE, our flagship program. We're wrapping up VMworld, just getting all these great interviews we can and expecting to see them from the We'll be right back after this short break. Cube is a live mobile studio, and we bring it to events, and we say we extract the signal from the noise. What we do is we get the app.